Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Worship Ministry Training Podcast. If you're new to the podcast, we release one new episode per month, and we always try to make them as topical and in-depth in nature as possible. The goal is to build a massive online archive of highly topical, highly practical episodes that will help you in a specific area of worship ministry. So dig through the episode list if you're new and check out all the topics we've covered so far. Today, I have the privilege of talking with Mac Brock, who was one of the main worship leaders and songwriters for Elevation Worship. Mac recently transitioned off staff at Elevation, and so I decided to talk with him about how to navigate big ministry transitions. You know, we will all go through some sort of ministry transition at some point in our life, and so if it's not current for you now, listen to the episode because you'll need the information later. But we talk about how to know whether it's time to leave a church or not, how to discern God's will in that, how to be in one accord with your family as you navigate this process, how to honor your leadership while you're leaving, and more. And Mac was very transparent and helpful in this episode. I also want to tell you about an episode we did about three years ago called How to Leave Your Church Well, which also fits well into this theme. So I will link that episode in the show notes for your further listening. Before we get into the podcast, I want to tell you about our recommended product this month, which is Core Sound Pads. Core Sound makes the best sounding backing pads on the market. They have a wide variety of sounds to choose from in all the major and minor keys. You can play the pads from their app. It's free to try. The app is called Pads Live. You can play them right from your iPhone or your iPad, or you can even download the MP3 or WAV files and load them into the software of your choice. And the pads really fill out the sound of your band and create a lush soundscape. They smooth out the transitions, they kill the awkward silence, they are truly remarkable, and I use them every single time I play a worship set. You can try them for free, and if you decide to purchase them, you can use the promo code WMTPODCAST at checkout to save 20% on your purchase. All the links are in the show notes, so be sure to check them out and strengthen the sound of your team. All right, with that, let's jump into our episode with Mac Brock. Hey, everybody. I am here with the one and only Mac Brock. Mac, thanks for being on the podcast. It's good to be here. Awesome. So, Mac, you recently transitioned out of your role at Elevation Church as one of the main worship leaders and into a new season. And I've had several worship leader friends who have recently transitioned from one church to another or from one season to another season. And and those transitional times can be super confusing and difficult and kind of feel like, ugh, like you're dying and being reborn. And so I would love for you to share with some of our listeners who maybe they're feeling like their season is coming to an end or they're not sure, and just kind of how you walked through that transitional time. So maybe we could start with just kind of how did you know that your time at Elevation was coming to a close? Like, how did you know that it was the Lord and not like some bad pizza that you ate, you know, the night before? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, anytime you're you're wrestling for any sort of like major decision, it really is hard to know, like, is this actually like from the Lord? And so I think like one of the first things that was important to me and my wife was just patience in the process. And it was a lot of prayer and a lot of sitting and conversing with each other and fasting together. We did a lot of that, you know, a feeling like we want to go into this like prayer journey, very focused And so for us, I think patience in the process is so key because a lot of times if you're in a situation, you know, you might be in a healthy situation and feel like the Lord might be calling you out and you need to pray through like all the things that you might feel like the Lord is putting on your heart. You might be like in an unhealthy situation or just a situation that's like not like totally like aligned with your preferences. Like a lot of times that will lead to making like an emotional decision, Mm. you know, And our emotions are often liars and our emotions are often misleading. The patience aspect was very, very important to us. We took our time. We sought wisdom. We really like dug into just what the Lord says in scripture. And we, and we dug into seeking counsel from people that we trusted their relationship with the Lord and we trusted their kind of their wisdom over our lives. And so it was a long process for us. But then ultimately, I think like when you feel that peace, has hearted, you know, it was extremely difficult for us to transition off as like a church staff. We had been at Elevation for 10 years and we loved it and we loved the people there. And so to come to this place of feeling like 
our assignments done, we're supposed to move on was extremely difficult for us. Mm. But as soon as we felt, you know, me and my wife as like a couple felt like the peace of the Lord releasing us, we knew that it was safe to start stepping into that. Mm -hmm. You talked about like patience. So how long did this from the first premonition to the time that you actually left staff, how long did that take? And and what was the initial kind of like kickoff? I feel something in my spirit changing. What was it? It's going to look different for everybody. For me, it honestly started with more of like a, in my relationship with the Lord and like the conversations I was having with him. I felt like him asking me, if I asked you to let this go, would you? Mm-hmm. It wasn't like, hey, I'm going to prepare you to leave. It wasn't anything like that to begin with. It was more so like, this is something that you love and this is uh, you know something that's great. If I asked you to move on from this, would you be able to do it? Mm. And my initial response is like very tight fisted and very much like, no, I'm good. I I like being here (laughs) and I don't need, you know, there's nothing else that I really want to do. So thanks for asking, but I'm fine. And, and it really did become like a wrestling match in a lot of ways. That's when I would bring in my wife in the process and we talk about it. And I don't know, it's, it's hard to say like how long the time was, you know, because it wasn't, necessarily like this is like the start of the journey for us to transition off of staff. It was more so like this was the start of the journey of just like having a conversation with the Lord, you know, maybe like two years before we left staff Mm. of just having that conversation. And it wasn't, I don't know, that doesn't represent like me. I was checked out, you know, for the next two years or anything like that. It was more so just like that was like a very initial early conversation I was having with God. Mm. And then it led to a lot of other wrestling. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like an Isaac situation, like, uh, lay this on the altar and stab it in the chest. Uh, no, yeah, I don't want yeah. to, Lord. You know? <laughs> right. So I wouldn't compare myself to that. But, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> you have the faith of Abraham. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you talked about this sense of peace. You felt like a sense of release, I guess, because I know in my transitions, it's been like there's been tension that's built up and it's internal tension. It might be external tension. Not that like you're running away from a problem or I was running away from problems. Sometimes God uses circumstances to direct our paths and and sometimes he uses uncomfortableness to you know, move us on. But sometimes he just, like you, puts a premonition in our heart and then you wrestle with him. And then there's this release period, at least in my life, where it was like, whoa, I have to go, like to be obedient to Christ, like I have to step into the next thing. So did you sense that sort of release that I'm talking about? And what was that like for you guys? Like, when did you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, like we got to do this? Yeah, the obedience thing is like key. One way to look at it is like stepping out in faith. And I think that that's an accurate description. But I think another like way to say it is like stepping out in obedience, Mm. you know, and those might be considered like one and the same. But for us, it felt very much more so like an obedience thing to like obeying the Lord's prompting. Mm. The biggest indicator for us and for me is because I was on the journey like with my wife. And so having that other voice, you know, and that other kind of we're one unit and we're able to, you know, we pray together and we fast together and we talk about what the Lord is doing together. And so when we both felt like I feel released, you know, and I, and we felt the same thing when we moved to Charlotte to be a part of Elevation, we went through the same process of like, Hey, I don't know if we're supposed to do this, go be a part of this, like new church. I'm, you know, leave all of our friends but we prayed about it and we fasted about it. And we both came to the same conclusion of like, yeah, like I do feel this is the right move for us. And this is where we're supposed to go. And so having, you know, if you're married, having that connection with your spouse and having those very open, honest conversations is like key. And if you're not married, I think it really is important like to surround yourself with people that, like I said, that you do trust. I think the other thing though, going back to what I was saying about the emotional, you know, how our emotions can like get in the way. I do hear what you're saying about, you know, sometimes like a bad situation is like a, it can lead you, like lead your path. But there's a lot of times that a bad situation 
is mostly just maybe like an emotional situation, you know, like mm-hmm. you might be like angry or pissed off about a certain decision or <laughs> maybe your preferences are getting overlooked or something, whatever it might be. And at any job corporate, at any job in a church, you're going to have those moments, mm-hmm. you know, where you can be in the healthiest situation, but still have these moments of like, wow, like that really hurt my feelings. I don't agree with this. And it's so easy for us because we're, it's like human nature to want to like knee jerk response to our emotions. Mm. And so with being patient in the process, that kind of like removes a little bit of the emotion out of it. Mm -hmm. I've been in several situations in my life where something might happen and I'll be like, that's it. I don't need this anymore. I'm quitting (laughs) or, you know, or whatever. And I have always been able to kind of take a breath, (laughs) you know, step back from myself, realize like, my emotions are like not the truth right now. Mm. They're just the way I feel, you know, and that's not God. Uh, and so being able to kind of like be aware of that, have a little bit of self-awareness of like your emotions is really helpful because it allowed, I don't know, working through that was like one of the biggest things because like then by the time it came to a point where, where we did feel like a peace and like a release we knew it wasn't based out of any sort of emotional reaction. Mm. It wasn't based off of anything other than our prayer life, really. That's when it felt like, yeah, we can do this. And this is really scary for us. And this isn't even like, I don't know. In in a lot of ways, it wasn't even like the desire of our heart (laughs) to do that. But we did feel like a peace and a release. And so we stepped into it. Yeah, I think that's probably, you know, a prophetic word for someone listening who's wanting to quit. And it's really just, you know, their own emotions or maybe the enemy discouraging them because God has good things for them in the future at that church, but they're wanting to leave. You know, maybe it's a Monday morning and they're feeling burnt out and they're feeling like, oh my gosh, nobody appreciates me. And and I love what you're saying. You're encouraging people, don't quit. Don't make a hasty decision. A hasty decision is almost never a good decision. And so I think that's great advice for someone listening listening right now that just is feeling discouraged. So it- yeah, and I was I was reading in my Bible this morning Joshua and I was reading the story about them walking around the walls of Jericho. And I always think now when I read that story about what it was like on the 6th day that they were walking, <laughs> you know, mm. or the 5th day. They've been walking. This is like the 5th and 6th day straight we've been walking around these walls. This is what the Lord told us. We haven't seen anything happen. Mm -hmm. this is very frustrating and very annoying. And I'm starting to doubt whether, you know, I'm supposed to do this anymore or whether I'm supposed to be here anymore. And it wasn't until that seventh day. And then the seventh time of the seventh day that that they finally like had that breakthrough that can translate in so many areas of our life. But I think it really can translate like in our, I guess like the vocational part of our lives too, that we just have to dig down, look past what's right in front of us. Because we know like we're being obedient to what the Lord has told us to do in that moment. Mm. Yeah, that's so good. You know, you talked about having your wife's voice help you in this discernment process, but you also talked about other people's voices. So like, and you said godly people that you trust, who are some of those people? And then maybe also talk about like, how early did you tell the leadership at Elevation Church that you were starting to think about these things? Because I think one of the fears is, oh my gosh, if I tell my boss, he's going to fire me. You know, hopefully nobody works in a church like that, but I know it happens. So who are these other voices? And then how early did you bring the leadership of Elevation into your discernment process? I have a lot of people in my life that, you know, are just like good, godly people that mentors and and people that I trust their instinct and I trust their relationship with the Lord. And I know that they are close to God. And it was like early on that I would bring people in that I was saying like, Hey, I'm kind of like wrestling with this or I, you know, I don't really know what this means. This is something that I feel like in my time with the Lord, this is something that I feel like he's like pressing on me. Can you help process this with me? You know, and can you pray about this with me? And then, you know, having conversations with my leadership at Elevation and just kind of just sharing a little bit of like, this is some some of the stuff that like I'm wrestling with and I'm like kind of pressing into and I don't really know what what it means or what, you know, but this is something that I'm going through. And so it is so important. My My dad's a pastor as well. And so him and my mom, you know, I'm close to them and would kind of bring them along in, in on the journey. But I also had like outside voices as well that were just that I could just rely on 
to pray with me. To have people not, when I say trust, it's not like to trust because it's like a secret, but it's more so like, I just trust that like, when you say that you're going to pray through this with me, like I trust that you will. When I say like, I want to hear like your perspective, like biblical perspective, I trust your relationship with the Lord to be able to give me wise, sound advice. Mm Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. And I think for whatever it's worth for whoever's listening, like one thing, I don't know if you found this Mac, but like sharing those things with people who have a vested interest in the outcome of the situation sometimes can be really confusing because they're going to potentially, if they're, I don't know, you know, everyone's sinful and selfish. Right. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they, they could they might they, manipulate they, it. Exactly. And I've had that experience where I was like, you know, I really feel the Lord is leading my family to do this. And the people that I was telling were like, absolutely not. The Lord needs you here. You need to stay here. He created you for this specific congregation, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, whoa, like I'm hearing two conflicting things from the Lord and from this person or group of right. people. If So I think sometimes finding a neutral party to talk to who has no vested interest in the outcome, that's the best place to get wisdom, I think. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I want to talk about like, what are some of the things you did to leave well, to honor your leadership in the transition? What did you do or not do to really leave well? I mean... I don't feel like I'm an expert, (laughs) you know, I don't, I think just being open and honest, like with your leadership is like, so key, you know, and I'm trying to think like, I, cause I mean, the ministry was pretty well established. Like it had a good system. It had good, everything, the structure was there. It wasn't like you needed to like get ducks in a row. Was it kind of an easy exit? You didn't need to do all sorts of things. Yeah. I mean, there was some of that though. There was, there was some of that of like making sure that just like, you know, from a, tangible responsibility level, like making sure that, that things were prepared for like when I stepped out, but that's kind of something that I think I've like always just tried to do in general as a leader in church. Like you try to multiply yourself and you try to make sure you're not the only person that can do this one thing in general. Mm -hmm. And so when it did come time for us to just like step out, I didn't feel like there was a lot for me to do to get my ducks in a row because I've been doing that for several years, you know, Mm -hmm. of having like other people carry responsibilities like with me. But, you know, I think just like honor the season that you were in and honor, you know, as hard as it was for us to like step out, there's still so much like positivity and so much like me and my wife talk often just about like just how special our time was at Elevation Mm -hmm. and how important that was to like our family and our marriage and just everything. That's like really important for us to like continue to like just like acknowledge the journey that we've been on. Yeah. It sounds like it was a really special time, people that you really loved and were super close with. Like, because I know I've wrestled with this and I think others do that leave their churches. Did you ever feel like the hero complex of like, this person needs me? How are they going to function without me? And what about this young, (laughs) young man I'm discipling? And like, I don't know. Do you want to talk about that at all? Yeah. I mean, I think that that is like, you know, a natural ego thing that happens to us just as like, you know, people is like, we love to be needed and we love to be important. And that's like a natural, like wrestling thing, you know, but I learned early on, like just how that wasn't even something that I could like try to grasp to, you know, and you might have like sparks of like quick, like emotion or that quick thing, like in your spirit where you're just like, ah, like I want to be needed and and I want them to I don't know, whatever it might be, you got to quickly like get that out of the way, you know, one, like it's just like not kingdom minded to think like that, like at all, but also like it's not beneficial to you. It's not beneficial to them. And so as much as I could, I don't know, just like be a champion of everybody that's still there and still doing the things that I was a part of, like I try to be that champion for them and try to pray for them and cheer, cheer them on. And that really curbs a lot of like the ego part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of the transition out of, let's talk a little bit about the transition into something new, like you're uprooting, you didn't move from the city or anything, did you? No, we're still in Charlotte. Okay. So your kids are still in the same school and your wife still has the same friends. Well, that's good. Okay. (laughs) That, That makes it a little bit easier. So then let's talk about transitioning into like something new. Like how unknown was your future when you said, okay, we're going to step out and we're going to go wherever the Lord leads us. Was it completely unknown? It was very, very unknown. 
Um, we didn't know if we were going to move or if we were going to, you know, if I needed to, you know, step into like a different church role or anything like that. Like we really didn't know. Again, like going back to the patience thing, we tried to just be patient and be be close to the Lord and kind of walk in whatever like path he was lighting up for us. And so we're very much still in the season of God is like a lamp unto our feet, just like <laughs> one step in front of the other. Mm. And it's been good. You know, it's been like an amazing journey for us as a family. Like it's been an amazing thing for like me and my wife to walk in that together because we're both planners. We like to know <laughs> what's happening five years down the road and, and we're goal oriented and we want to like push forward and all that stuff. And and all of that is like so good and, and I think is like healthy, but that's not our reality right now. Mm-hmm. It's more so all right, navigating one day at a time and navigating one month at a time and, and figuring out, okay, what are we doing now? Where, where are we going? And it's been, you know, it's been a fun process for us. Yeah. <laughs> Has it been relaxing at all? Uh, I would not call it relaxing. No. <laughs> not, <laughs> relaxing not for a is, is the opposite word that I would use. Yeah. No, it has been peaceful though. You know, yeah. there's a lot of stress that comes along with unknown. Mm. And it's very easy to get anxious. And sometimes I have spikes of that. But for the most part, there's just like a, a just a sense of peace and grace over our family. And so we can kind of trust in that. Yeah. Two more quick questions about the transition. Were there any specific promises of God that you really held on to during that uh, time? Even if they're not like specific verses, but just like general concepts? I don't know. I don't, I don't think I thought of it in terms of that. Like this is like a promise of God that we heard. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we would do as a family a lot that we kind of like picked up at our time at Elevation is is pick a word for the year, you know, and we have like a word that we kind of like rally around for our family for the mm-hmm. year. And so just looking back and me and my wife take it very seriously and we like spend a lot of time praying and seeking like what is the thing that like what is – kind of this umbrella that you want to like cover our family with like in the past some of our words have been like words like clarity like we need clarity for our future or expectation like we're expectant that god is you know gonna like show up Mm. and we don't know what it might look like but we're expectant and so there's been a lot of stuff like that and it's not necessarily like this is like a promise from the lord but it's more so like this is what we feel like the lord has like spoken like a word over our family Mm. And so we're going to press into that and kind of like believe that. Yeah, yeah, that's rad. Just kind of wrapping up this whole transition thing, looking back, what do you feel you did well to transition out? What do you wish you did better or any kind of just final concepts about that? I feel like the process was really good and healthy for us, honestly. Mm-hmm. I think it was it was good for for my family and I think like good for you know elevation and and where we came from and so I don't know if there's anything that I would do different or change um no that's good and I I mean even what you just said like it, it was good for your family and good for elevation like every person so far in my two years at this new church like that has uh gone out a couple people have gone out and they're like worship pastors at other churches now and or they're you know serving in other places and everybody who's taken a step of faith like that, it's been so good for their soul, for their walk with the Lord, for the kingdom of God. And it's like, whenever people take steps of faith, I feel like it's a win for everybody, you know? And right. so yeah, I yeah. love that you you mentioned that. Let's talk about the album, the new one, Covered, because I feel like you've released two now since you've been out of Elevation. The new one, Covered, I just listened to it like a few days ago. And the words that I wrote down to describe it are like very intimate, vulnerable, and personal. And it's like we're peeking into a room where it's just you, a guitar, and the Lord. And these are kind of your authentic prayers um, to the Lord. Like you weren't writing for Nashville. You were writing your true prayers to the Lord. Is that how you describe it? Yeah, that's a great description. I love that description. It was, yeah, I would say that these songs have been really vulnerable for me and they have been very just kind of important to me. You know, it's one of those things that it's a little bit weird when you're a songwriter and then the song like ministers to you kind of feels a little bit like cocky or something, (laughs) but, but for real, like they have been, and I, I love, 
you know, that intimate process of songwriting and, and sometimes you don't know like where the words come from or where, how the Lord like deposits like a song down into you. But when it does, like it's really has been like a ministry to me. And, and there are a lot of songs on this project that I have to sing over myself. And so it's been a really special project for me. Mm. You want to talk a little bit about the production? It sounds not live, but it sounds more organic. We spent just a week in the studio. I got, you know, Jason Ingram produced it. And going into it, me and him just talked a lot about like, we don't want to get into the studio like fully formed Mm. with these songs and we're just tracking them. You know, like we know all the parts and we know every all the dynamics and we just got to track the parts. We kind of went into it. It's like, let's get some of like our favorite musicians, get into a studio for a week, and we'll just have everybody there all week long. And we'll just kind of live in it and see what comes out, mm. what sounds come out, what dynamics come out. And so we really treated it. I felt like when we were going over the song, I mean, some of the songs we were still writing in the studio too. Like we were still like finishing up parts here and there. The way it felt to me was like church rehearsal. Mm. You know, like when you're like <laughs> rehearsing for a worship set. And yeah. you get the band in the, you know, on stage and you're trying to work out like, all right, how are we going to do this? It felt like that, but just in the studio. And so we would, we'd track a lot of different takes and figure out what dynamic we liked the best or what, I don't know, just like what flow of the song like felt the best in the moment. And, mm-hmm. and then we'd start whittling it down. So yeah. it was a so, really, it was a really great process. Yeah. It was very organic. Yeah. Are there any songs in particular that like you feel like listeners should check out and, and uh, potentially introduce into their congregations? The two songs that stick out to me the most that have just been like really special for me to sing is one, I am loved, which is just a song that is something that I need to hear for myself. Mm -hmm. because I have, I have a tendency to see like God is like a frustrated God at me, you know, just kind of like annoyed at me (laughs) for not doing things right all the time. And for, you know, I just, I just have a hard time, I think, accepting his love, Mm -hmm. if I'm being honest. And I still do sometimes, you know, I still have those moments. I think being a dad now, I've started to get a glimpse of just that unconditional love. And that's like helped transform how I see God. But that's just been like a really special song for me. And then the other one is Still in Control. And that's just a song that was kind of birthed out of a lot of anxiety for the future, anxiety for like our world or country or, you know, my kids and feeling like uh, just really anxious about a lot of things. I was talking with a friend of mine and we just kept coming back to this idea of like, you know, my God is still in control though. Like even when I'm looking into like the darkness and it feels like so overwhelming and heavy, I really can trust that God is still in control no matter what. Yeah. And thanks for being vulnerable about the whole love, you know, feeling God's love thing. Like I, I think a lot of us resonate with that same sentiment. Like, uh, I think God's just mad at me all the time, but, <laughs> uh, it, it's real. Yeah, I think if you, I grew up in the church and my wife didn't. And when I met her and was like, I just remember this difference between like the way that we like kind of saw God. And I realized like she, she met the Lord like when she was in high school and she just has a very tender, I don't know, like a tender acceptance of like an understanding of God's love for her. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when we grow up in the church and we're surrounded just by like the constant language of God's love and grace and mercy and his sacrifice that he made for us. Sometimes it just, it gets so easy to get caught up in just like the language and not the depth of like the reality of what that language represents. Mm. And so it's just easy for us to get in this, like we get lost, you know, in the linguistics of it, or we get lost in just like the, just the distracting stuff that like take away from just like the basic understanding that like God loves us. And it doesn't go away and it doesn't change. Yeah. So I am loved. Everybody check, check that song out for sure. And, and, uh, introduce it into your bodies and not your real bodies, your church bodies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess by listening to it, you also introduce it into your body technically. So there you go. Um, uh, Mac, so, uh, where can people stay up with you online? Two questions. 
that one, where can they find you online? And I think a cool question right now in this transitional season is how can people specifically be praying for you and your family? Oh, man. Thanks for asking. Best way to stay up, you know, is like Facebook and Instagram. You know, it's just Mac Brock, stuff like that, or, or my website, which is just MacBrock.com. But I think prayers for our family, the biggest thing that I tell people like that they can be praying for us is just continued prayer for for just the connection in our family. And we're just in a really like sweet season, like with our kids. And I kind of have like a weird job where like I'm home a lot and I'm like, when I'm home, I'm just kind of like home and I'm like very, you know, active with the kids and active with my wife. But then, but then I'm gone a lot too. I travel a lot. And so there's like a, it's very like night and day sometimes. Hmm. And so just, I don't know. It's, it's always a prayer for us that every time like, I'm home and present that that would be supernaturally like charged Mm -hmm. in the connection that I have like with my children. And, you know, our prayer is constantly like that. What I do as like a ministry through like music or traveling or whatever it might be. I don't want that to just be like Mac Brock's ministry. I want that to be like the Brock family ministry. And Mm -hmm. I want my kids to be a part of that. My wife to be a part of that. And so we're constantly finding like ways to bring them in. And so just, I don't know, just like praying that connection remains, you know? Yeah, no, that's really good. And and I'll pray for you. And I'm sure the people uh, listening will pray for you as well. Mac, thank you for your time today and for your ministry to the global church. We appreciate it so much. Yeah, thanks, Alex. All right, that's all we have time for today. I hope this episode was helpful to you, especially if you are one of those people who are considering whether or not to transition into something new. I will say as a final word, never run from something, always run to something. So wait for the Lord to open something and give you clarity on that thing. Don't just run away from your problems. That's not what God would want. So that's it for today. I hope you guys were blessed. Uh, Check out Mac's new project, Covered. It's amazing. It's on all the normal platforms, Spotify, iTunes, all that. Check out Core Sound Pads, our sponsor this month, and get some amazing sounds. You can check that out at coresoundpads.com. All right, guys, God bless you. I'll see you next month for another helpful episode.